Hey guys, how are we all? All right, guys, we are live. Well, I'm praying we're live. I say this absolutely every single week. The fact is, the Wi Fi in our new house is shite to say the absolute least. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we're live. I'm a one take kind of girl, so we'll roll with it. Okay, tonight, guys, um, the live training inside the group tonight, episode eight of the Property Sourcing Show. And the live training, guys, that I want to do tonight is centered around raising finance. Okay, so. As you guys know, the, the whole premise of the Property Sourcing Show, which I do live every single week into the community, is really to deliver short, actionable, bite-sized information um, and help and tactics and strategies that you guys in the community can take and implement straight away. Now, Raising Finance 101, when I was going through my notes earlier on today, it's a longer session. Okay, there's maybe about eight different pointers that I want to touch on with you guys. So what I have decided to do, you guys, is actually break up the Raising Finance, the 101, like the download, into two separate sections. So tonight we'll do Raising Finance part one, okay? And I'll cover maybe um, three of the top tips that you need to be taking on board right now to help you raise um, JV Finance. And then next week, next Wednesday, we'll jump on and we'll do Raising Finance 101 part two, and we'll cover like another three or four uh, strategies that you guys need to be implementing on your property journey to raise finance. Okay, so what I'm going to do, guys, hopefully I can do this. I'm going to share my screen with you all. Um, I have some PowerPoint slides here that should work. All right, cool. I'm going to jump off camera, guys. I'm going to talk you through as we go. Raising Finance 101 Part 1. Remember, short, sharp actionable bite-sized points of information that you can take with you on your property journey today to help you raise uh, finance, to help you raise investment, to help you find joint venture partners, to help you find investors. So if you are watching this live, let me know in the comments below, are you watching live? Let me know as we go what your key takeaways are. Let me know where you guys are based. It's always nice to know where people are tuning in from. I'm obviously based here in Belfast. There are very few of you based in Northern Ireland. So let me know where you guys are at. And let's kick off tonight, guys. Okay. Right, guys, by the way, as we go through the next couple of steps, and as I say, I'm going to cover maybe three or four of the top strategies here tonight. And then next week, we're going to kick off into Raising Finance Part 2. But these exact steps, guys, that I cover across the, the two nights, have enabled me to make the move from initially deal packager to JV partner, portfolio landlord. And as we enter 2021, my plans are moving into development, okay? So I'm able to do that with the, with the financial backing behind me of my most trusted and preferred investor, who happens to be, guys, the same investor I onboarded over three years ago and began my deal packaging journey for her by sourcing like a 50K buy to let right? Now that same investor today is standing behind me as an angel investor to the tune of half a million pounds for my first ever development. So I really want you guys to think about that tonight. Let that sink in. Three or, or just three and a half years ago, I was sourcing this lady by to lets for two and a half thousand pounds a piece, which by the way, there's absolutely fuck all wrong with, excuse my French. That's a nice sum of money to earn for a deal. But in three and a half years, I've gone from sourcing no standard buy to lets to having that same lady back me in the hundreds of thousands of pounds. Okay, so think about that for a second, guys. Think about that for the naysayers. These steps work, guys. They are absolutely effective. And the steps that we cover here tonight, guys, we actually do inside my own private mentorship. Okay, these are the exact same steps that I have the guys inside the mentorship doing. That's what we do day in, day out. This is what we specialize in. We help mentees raise finance, okay? Some of the guys inside the mentorship program are actually at the stage where they no longer have the capacity to onboard any more investors. Now, guys, have, have a think about that. That would be a nice problem to have, to actually be able to say, I know you're desperate to give me some money, but quite frankly, I've got too much at the moment. Like, come on, guys. OK, allow yourself to believe this is possible for you. Actually, before I jumped on a live tonight, I noticed a comment, um, a, a comment under tonight's post when we spoke about raising finance. Uh, and I noticed that someone had left a comment saying no one will ever put the you know, full up front investment into you. OK, 
you, there's too much risk. They'll never do it. They'll just have you project manage. Now, everybody's entitled to their own opinions. But if you don't have self-belief in yourself, value what it is that you bring to the table, value what it is that you can give your investor, value what you can offer them, value that you can increase their cash flow, value that you can increase their wealth. If you don't believe that, nobody fucking else is going to believe it for you. So it starts and it ends with you. Okay, so the steps that I'm going to go through tonight, guys. You absolutely have to do them all with commitment, with conviction and consistency. And that, by the way, guys, is where so many people fall down on their raising finance journey. So like they commit for the fast food results. You will have heard me speak about this before. Okay, you will have heard me say property investment, raising finance, finding investors is not McDonald's yet. So many people seem to be of the entitled opinion that they can go to a drive through and pick up finance as they would pick up a big fucking Mac. You're going to have a long fall from grace if that's your attitude, okay? I speak to people who feel entitled. Let me make this perfectly clear to you guys. You are entitled to absolutely nothing. You will work for everything that you achieve, okay? So the results that you get from, say, implementing the strategies that I speak about tonight, the results that you get from maybe implementing the strategies that I speak about on next week's 101, okay? They will be in a direct correlation with the level of action and effort that you put in to, uh, when, when tonight's session ends, okay? If you put in a half ass effort, I can assure you, you will get a half assed return. If you go balls to the walls with your effort, with your action, with your consistency, you will get the same level of results in return. This is a maths game. Don't make it hard. So think about that, guys, as we cover through some of the steps. I'm, I think I'm going to do maybe three tonight because I'm very conscious. I like the shows to be short, sharp, actionable, bite size. I don't like them to go on past 30 minutes. I think you can take in the information really quickly and implement it just as quick. Okay, so let's spend 30 minutes here tonight going through, say, three of the top strategies that you need to be deploying in your property journey in order to raise investment. All right, let's dive in, guys. Okay. Now, the first thing that we need to actually get off our chest, guys, we need to debunk a widespread myth, okay? And this myth will be the very revelation that you need to kick start your hunt for, you know, investment, the golden ticket, okay? Investors are not mythical creatures. They are not unicorns. They are not clad in gold. They are not driving Bugattis. They are not dripping in diamonds. They are not carrying obscene amounts of cash in a Louis Vuitton holdo. All right. Unless, of course, it is um, Floyd Mayweather, who we've got there on our slide. If you find him, send him to me. OK, investors are normal people, just like you and I, guys. Some of us more normal than others, pointing no fingers. Right. So I've just said it. The word didn't stop turning. Investors are normal people. In all my experience, guys, of dealing with investors and raising finance and securing joint venture partners, I have never I have never found my investor to be the stereotype of filthy, stinking rich, okay? I have never had that encounter, ever, with, particularly with the investors that I work with, okay? Now, I cannot help, guys, but feel that it's really important to get that fact on the table from the get-go. Now, this is, a, this is a really, really simple mindset shift, by the way, guys, okay? And when you come to terms of, by the way, mindset is absolutely key to your journey in property, it's key, but this is, that's another training. Maybe if there's enough demand for, for the mindset training, I'm happy to jump in some night and do a session on that. Um, but right now, we're not going to focus on mindset. We're going to focus on strategy. But it's really, really important that I point out to you that your property journey is actually 90% mindset and 10% strategy. If you believe you can, you will. If you believe you can't, you simply won't. Okay, so once you become okay and okay with the fact that investors are normal people like you and I, then it actually makes the, your fear of approaching them, it actually makes your fear of hunting them out, stalking your prey much easier. I say that with jest. I'm not looking for you to stalk anybody. Okay, caveat. I'm not looking for anybody to stalk, but go with me. Now, bear in mind, guys, money is actually often found in the most unassuming of places. In the hands, by the way, of the most unassuming or perceived unlikely of hands. Don't write off the guy next door, okay? Don't write off the ordinary guy who does his nine to five every day. 
Okay, my first ever investor, guys, could not have been further from the stereotype that I had built up in my head. The, the investor that I first began working with, in my head, I had built him up like he should be carrying a wad of cash, that he should be driving a Lamborghini, you know, that he should be totally unapproachable. All right, that's not the case. He was driving a Berlingo van. He was like the most down-to-earth man I've ever met. He's actually a really good friend now, has gone on to fund several of my projects, has been business partner in the past, and a very good friend. And it all started with a Berlingo van. No offense to Berlingo fans. I think they're great. Now, now that we've got that out of the way, guys, got that mindset shift out of the way, let's jump head first into the first of a series of steps. And as I said, guys, when I was going through some of my notes today, you know, I really could have spoken on this topic for quite a considerable amount of time, but we keep our, our episode short. So let's cover three, say, top strategies tonight. And next week, let's jump in with another three. First thing I want you guys to do when it comes to starting trying to raise investment, find finance, find an investor, is to come prepared. Compile your investor pack immediately. Now, I know what you're thinking there, guys. This is all a little bit premature, Daniel. Surely I need to have an investor before I shoot him or her um, an investor pack, okay? Now, I'm always, I always get a chuckle when I hear people refer to investors as he. Uh, in fact, I was actually on a, on a call on one of, my, my, one of my mentor calls this week when one of my guys asked about my current investor who was funding my current deal and consistently referred to him as he. How did you, how did you structure it with him? What does he want from the deal? What's his preferable outcome? Now, I just want to let you guys know that us ladies are making a serious dent in the property industry um, on a whole. Our voices are being heard loud and proud. We are coming up through the ranks at frightening speed. So I always find it really, really funny when people automatically default to the he as the investor, that only a man could be an investor. Watch out, guys. You should be looking over your shoulder because we are coming for you. All right. Anyway, I digress. To get back to this, you don't need to have secured an investor before you send this document, okay? That's what everybody thinks. I need to have the investor before I send the document. Well, but face news, sorry, false news, fake news, the Trump, fake news, all right? So I think it was maybe a week or two ago, I held a, a masterclass inside my mentorship, right? And the masterclass covered the art and the necessity of having a quality investor pack, guys. Everything that it should entail. Why it's a powerful document, okay? Why it's absolutely imperative, particularly, guys, if you're actively seeking to find an investor or source or raise funds for your own projects. Now, what surprised me most about this particular masterclass was the fact that a lot of the guys in there had yet to, to compile and finalize an investor pack. Now, let me make this really, really clear for you guys. If you are seeking investors and you have yet to do this, then you are grossly, grossly underestimating what is required from you as a property investor, as someone who is seeking uh, finance, who is seeking an investor, who is seeking to raise private finance. You are grossly underestimating what is required from you if you do not have this in place. Put yourself front and center of the money. This is a fact. This is a fact. If you want to build credibility, if you want to build trustworthiness, if you want to build visibility, then you better start preparing your investor pack. Now, why should you prepare your investor pack first? This is quite simply the most hard-hitting statement that a mentor of mine said to me when I was under his coaching a number of years ago. You should never look for the money when you need it okay so i'm going to say that to you again guys you should never look for the money when you need it now that all rang too true to me and it continues to ring true to me today when i first began my sourcing journey guys i had the completely wrong approach okay because i made the fatal mistake of actually um finding the deal before i found the investor Okay, that's a fatal mistake. It's completely the wrong approach. You should always, 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 always ensure that you have an investor in place before seeking out the deals. Okay, be sure that you have a joint venture partner willing to come on board to fund your deal or part fund your deal or whatever your setup is going to be. You want to have that money 
before you have that deal. People are of the opinion that if you build it, they will come. Well, quite fucking frankly, that's not the case. Okay? People say, ah, oh, the deal's good enough. You'll always find the money. It's balls. Because people need to know who you are to give you the money. If you, if you appear out of you know, the crevices of the earth from up under the floorboards of complete oblivion with a deal, nobody's really going to want to know much about it because they don't know you to like you to pay you. Think about that. They don't know you to like you to pay you. So the, the premise that if you build it and they will come, the premise that if the deal's good enough, you'll always find the money, it's a load of shite, quite frankly. You might get lucky once, you might even get lucky twice, but there is no consistency or scalability in it. No consistency or scalability in it, okay? So take my first step in this process really, really seriously, guys, and compile an investor pack with an air of urgency. But take your time and diligent consideration into what should go into this pack, guys, okay? So the general format of your investor pack should really look like company summary, company profile, case studies, investment proposal. Don't get bogged down, guys, into the content of what to put into this. This is where a lot of guys fail. So your company summary is really a brief synopsis of where you're based, uh, you know, who's involved in your company. Are you the sole director? Are you in business with a partner? You know, use the company summary to, of the investor pack to let us know about this. It's also really crucial, guys that you use this section of the investor pack to showcase your elevator pitch. Now, this is a whole other landmine, right? Because I bet most of you guys listen to this. If you're watching this live, let me know with a simple yes or no. Do you have your your elevator pitch refined? I spoke to someone on the phone tonight and I I challenged him to give me his elevator pitch. Uh, He couldn't do it. And I had said to him, listen, your elevator pitch should roll off your tongue the same as your name and your date of birth, okay? It should not be robotic. It should not be mechanic, but it should be natural. If someone asks you your name or your date of birth, you can say it literally without even glancing sideways and you say it casually. Your elevator pitch should roll off your tongue the exact same. So I don't want to get into elevator pitch tonight. It is something that you need to be thinking about. Um, And it is something you're going to want to put inside your investment uh, pack as well. So let me know in the comments if you're watching live. A simple yes, uh, you can do your elevator pitch or no, I'm screwed. Let me know in the comments below. How many times, by the way, guys, um, have we heard the mantra in this industry in particular? But it's it's true in business. It's irrespective of whether you are seeking property investment and um, irrespective of whether you have a property business or any business. Okay. The mantra of no like, and trust rings true every single time. It sounds so cliche. I get it. I'm rolling my own eyes. I'm being sick in my own mouth as we speak. No like trust, trust is so fucking cliche, but it's so fucking true. Okay. Would you give money to somebody that you didn't like but they maybe had a good deal? Or would you invest your money in someone that you had grown to like, grown to uh, know, grown to trust, and they had yet to find the deal? I'm not giving my money to anybody I don't like. I don't care how good their deal is. If I don't like you, you're not getting my money. It's the exact same premise, guys, when you're trying to raise investment. No, like, trust, okay? So, use this as a springboard with your investor pack to help someone make a decision that they would like to get to know you, okay? A well-written company summary, guys, will do the talking for you. And it actually allows you to weed out the time wasters in the game very, 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 very early on, all right? So company profile, case study section of your investor pack will center heavily around you as a person, your experience, okay? This is a document that will allow you to highlight your credibility, but more importantly, your investability, okay? your investability. And after all, guys, if it's investment you're seeking, this pack cannot be underestimated, okay? Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. I'm new around here. What I put in, um, you know, I don't have much I can put in my investor pack. I've never done a deal. I just want to tell you to relax. Check out my slides. <laughs> Check out my slides. 
So I appreciate that a lot of the guys in our community here at Property Source and Made Simple are newcomers. Um, I ran a poll in the group recently and it would seem that most people are in the first not to six months of their journey. Okay, So if you're a relative newcomer to property, a, either sourcing, um, deal packaging or property investment, I would have anticipated that maybe a lot of you are sweating blood at the prospect of having to compile an investor pack when you've got no experience to put in it. But that, that's okay, guys, and all's not lost. All right, so for those of you guys uh, who have no deals to reference on, the solution is actually really, really simple, and it's very, very acceptable. So highlight the things in your investor pack that actually make you credible, okay? So things like compliance details, registration numbers, policy numbers, certificates of registration, all right? Tell us about maybe any education you've been on. A lot of us have done property courses. A lot of us have, have, have done some property training. A lot of us have been on various different courses. Um, are you being mentored? Tell us who's mentoring you, okay? To actually add further to that, if you have been mentored or, or are currently being mentored, ask your mentor for a personal reference, okay? Ask your coach for a personal reference. Now, these are really, really small but incredibly effective tips, guys, that will actually set you head and shoulders above the competition, when it comes to not only grabbing the investor's attention, but maintaining it, okay? So it's okay to get a scroll stopper every now and again. It's something that grabs someone's attention, but if you're not retaining their attention, it's shite. It's bullshit. It means nothing, okay? So by the way, guys, in this section of your, of your investor pack, you can include things like power team contacts, builders that you intend to work with, legal team that you intend to work with, maybe a broker that you intend to work with, um, you could go a little bit further in your investment pack, guys, and you know, tell us the types of deals that you generally tend to seek out. Now, I am not telling you that you should say you have bought these deals because that would be misinformation, but it is okay to put into your investor pack the types of properties that you tend to look for, the types of properties that your area tends to offer. All right? These are all things that you can put into your investor pack if you have yet to find or do a deal. Okay. This, by the way, guys, goes a long way at building credibility and investability. All right. I have lost count, guys, of the number of messages I have received daily from people that I have never had a conversation with in my life, but they think it's okay to shoot me across like a piss per A4 page with a few details on a deal and ask me, do I want to invest? Now, people like that never get a response. Never get a response. So I want you guys, if you're serious about raising investment, if you're serious about raising finance, if you're serious about bringing JV partners into your life, you are going to have to sell yourself part. So enter the game as you intend to go on in a really professional manner, guys. This is not a hobby, by the way. Okay? This is not a hobby. The ability to raise finance, guys, is life-changing. And I can say that with great conviction. So show up with your best foot forward and your game face on. So that's, that's the first strategy and the first top tip, guys, that I want to cover with you tonight is bulletproof step number one, come prepared and bring on your um, investor pack immediately. Absolutely, absolutely vitally uh, imperative. All right, guys, second tip, second strategy that I want to cover with you guys tonight. Know your sphere of influence, Okay. Know your sphere of influence. Now, this, by the way, guys, is hands down the single most effective strategy to get yourself off to a good start when it comes to kickstarting your investor database. All right. But here's one thing, guys, that I would like to point out. Never, ever, 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 ever believe that you need to have a list the length of the Great Wall of China of investors to be successful at property. Okay. It's quite simply not true. To date, I have only ever worked with four investors and it has stood me incredibly well. So this initial sphere of influence is an incredibly powerful one, guys, and one that if you do and nurture correctly, it can have infinite rewards. Please don't buy in to the hype that you need to have an email list of investors of like 100, 200, 300, 500, 1,000 investors. I would bet my home on the fact that if you have that investor database, that at least 95% of them are non-active investors not buying. So if you, you can work with three to five exceptional investors, you'll be set. Okay, so sphere of influence. Think of it like this. Think of the things that you like to do. Think of the people, if you don't, by the way, have an investor avatar, an ideal client avatar, you need to get one. All right, separate, completely separate um, topic. 
and I don't want to go off on a tangent, but you need to have an avatar of what your ideal client looks like. Okay. And the reason for that is it actually makes tapping into your sphere of influence much easier because when you know what your ideal client and investor likes to do, where they like to go, where they like to be, what they like to say, then that's where you need to go, where you need to be, where you, what you need to talk about. Okay. Ideal client investor avatar is absolutely imperative. It's actually a little side bonus strategy. Write it down, get it done. Now, think of it like this way, guys. When you're tapping into your sphere of influence, I want, I want you to get this in your head. People hate being sold to, but they love to go shopping with friends. Okay, I'm going to say that again. People hate being sold to, but they love to go shopping with friends. So in a nutshell, make friends with people in your sphere of influence. Tell people what you do. Keep telling people what you do. So who is in your sphere of influence right now? And I guarantee you, your, your current sphere of influence is actually much greater than you think. You simply have not explored it. Now, I know that sounds really, really simple, guys. And the, the fact is, sorry to burst your bubble, but it absolutely is. Open up your phone right now. Your phone contact list, that is your very first sphere of influence. And you did not have to leave the room, break a sweat, get off the sofa, change the channel, anything to do it. Use it. Use it. All right? This is actually... This particular strategy, guys, is actually where things got incredibly real for a mentee of mine not too long ago, John. John B, we call him. Now, John used a script that I'm going to give you guys. I think it's I think it's on the next slide. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. The script that John used uh, in this text message, and it can be a text message, it can be a DM, it can be an email. You know, it just has to be sent one way or the other. But John sent this message that we worked on together um, he sent it to maybe six or seven people overnight and he raised 200,000 pounds by tapping into his sphere of influence. Now, this is not airy-fairy. This is not wishy-washy. This is not a load of balls. This is factual. Okay? So would 200,000 pounds of investment raised, would it make any impact on your business and property? Um, if the answer is no, you need your head checked. Okay? Now, this particular script, guys, we've tweaked and retweaked over the last couple of years, and I've actually adapted it for a sort of current climate-friendly one, COVID-friendly, dare I say. All right, let's, I hope it's on the next, yeah, all right, cool. So, take a look at, this, uh, at the text that was sent. Um, hi, Yaz, I hope you're well. It's been a while since we last caught up. Time hasn't quite been a luxury of mine for, for good reason. Over the last number of months, I've used the situation that we find ourselves in with a result of more time due to COVID, to focus my efforts on setting up my property investment business, a project that I have been toying with for quite some time. I would love for us to catch up soon to tell you a little bit more about it and perhaps pick your brains on what it is that I'm currently doing. Maybe you even know someone who could benefit from my services. You can't see that, but that's what it says at the bottom. Right. Now, guys, seriously, this, um, I had John send this particular message out. He should have sent it to at least 20 in a sphere of influence in his contacts. He sent it to six from memory. But six was good enough because six raised him £200,000 from one investor who happened to be an old friend from school, who also happens to be a contractor, who also happened to be looking to invest, who knew that John could help him because John works in new build development. Okay, there is a link, there is a chain, there is a sphere of influence in absolutely all of us. You have to tap into it. You have to tap into it. One of the first things that I will have the guys inside my mentorship program do is to reach out to everyone in their phone contact list, with the exception of a few. We don't need to be hitting up your granny and we don't need to be hitting up, you know, like the local pizza company. But you must, must, must exploit the, the resources that you have at your fingertips before you tell me it's not working, all right? If, they, if the people are in your phone, it is likely that you have had at least one conversation with them at one point in time by tapping into your sphere of influence with a single text, guys. And it can be an email, it can be a DM. If you're brave enough, it can be a phone call. It's really that simple, all right? I ask all the guys inside the, mentee, uh, the, the mentorship program to reach out with a simple text Hi, how are you? I hope you're well. 
I wanted to reach out today, let you know about, about my new business venture in property investment. You know, maybe I've set up a business page on Facebook. I would love for you to give it a, a little bit of a like. People love guys to be made to feel part of something. It's relationship and rapport building. It's putting you on their radar. Now, they may not have business to do with you right now today. Maybe they will in 12 months' time. But perhaps they know someone right now who could benefit from what it is that you have to offer. Maybe they know someone in their sphere of influence who is interested in property investment. Maybe they could make an introduction from their sphere of influence to you. It sounds really simple, guys, and I have to break it to you. It's because it is. But quite frankly, too many people spend too much time sitting at home wallowing looking at everybody else out there go getting it and complaining that it's all right for them because the fact is other people are out doing this day in day out and they are no different from you they are no different from you the difference is hunger the difference is hunger okay i'm actually going to show you guys uh, another example of this sphere of influence at its absolute finest and this relates to me okay so is there a screenshot? Yes. Okay. This is this is a screenshot from my own WhatsApp. All right. Now, this is an example of the sphere of influence in motion. And it's a screen grab of my own conversation between myself and a lady, a lady that I had previously met at a networking event. Now, I maintain contact with this lady. I dipped into text every now and again. I was positioning myself at the forefront of her mind at all times. So during one conversation, I told her I was actively seeking another flip project. Okay. You can see the conversations there. It's, it's clear. It's transparent to see. So what did I do in this conversation that so many people didn't or don't do? All right. Brucey bonus points. If you can see what I did in this text message exchange that so many people don't do. I'm going to give it five seconds. If you're watching this live, comment, can you see what I've done that other people don't do? It's so fucking, so fucking simple. Right. I'm going to put you out of your misery. I asked her outright if she would like to consider doing something together. That's what I did that so many people don't. I just asked her outright if she would like to do something together. The results, by the way, guys... You can fast forward, let's see, on another slide. Fast forward exactly. There we go. Flip project. You can see there's me and my beautiful polka dot mask. Exceptionally productive JV meeting had. Project find a flip now activated. You can see some pictures in there of our flip project that we secured. Some before and after progress pics. And by the way, this particular project sold for, I think it was 15 or 18,000 pounds over the asking price. And it completes next Friday funds in the bank, all via JV partnership, 100% finance raised, put in by my JV partner on a 50-50 profit share split. This shit happens. It happens because I asked. Okay. These are the things guys that I want to get across to you. Okay. So don't complain about other people who are out there going, get, getting it done. They're simply just hungrier than you because this works for everybody. This works for everybody. All right. Now, this, guys, by the way, I'm conscious that we're, that we're coming up to our 30-minute mark. So I want to do one more quick-fire strategy, okay? So we've covered strategy number one, getting your investor pack in place immediately. We've covered strategy number two, st t stepping into your sphere of influence, tapping into it, exploiting the resources that are quite literally at your fingertips. So let's do number three strategy when you're going to love the simplicity of this one. It's absolutely get visible. Now, this, by the way, guys, is the single most common buyer that I find a lot of newcomers, and I'm putting that in like the first not to six months of property, struggle with they're afraid to put yourselves out there, they're worried about how they will look, what others will think, and of course, we always get that paralyzing imposter syndrome. That usually takes over in full force. That will stop you dead in your tracks. I want to make this very, very clear, guys. Uh, you have to be seen to be noticed. People have to know who you are. You don't want to be the best kept secret in your town, okay? You just simply don't. You just don't. You have to be seen to be noticed. So if you do nothing else right now, guys, at this very moment in time, if it's the only step that you take at this stage of your journey to start implementing raising finance strategies, get online and get seen today.
Now, don't get hung up on your lack of experience if you don't have any. Do not get hung up on the fact that you have maybe no deals, maybe don't have any investment in place at the moment. Do not get hung up if you have no contacts. These are the types of things that can be changed. And by the way, I can almost guarantee you that they will change once you commit yourself to putting yourself out there. But you have to make the decision to, to do it to begin with. Now, there is no doubt about the fact, guys, that the entire globe has been operating solely online for the last 12 months. However, pre-COVID, online was still the quickest way to generate investment before the world went into this crazy lockdown, which we are now thankfully out of almost. And it will continue to be the quickest way to raise investment. Social media, guys, and this is what so many people just don't get. Social media is a tool which can take you, your property investment business on a, tra a trajectory that you could only ever dream of. It's entirely possible, but here's the real kicker. It's fucking free for the large part. For you to get out there on social media today, it's free. You don't need paid ads. You don't need digital ads. You don't need print media ads. You don't need sponsorship ads. You just need to get on line Pick a social media platform, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, <coughs> TikTok, dare I say TikTok. Clubhouse makes me want to slip my wrists, but people are, or I, I get that people are on it. It's not for me. You know, never say never. I may come back to it, but right now it ain't for me. But the pro what I'm trying to get across to you is pick a, pick a platform and roll with it. Hammer it. Nail it. Okay? Now, the entire premise with getting visible and online is that you do it with conviction, con consistency, and commitment. I say this a lot. Conviction, consistency, and commitment. But they really are the, the three pillars of everything you do in your property business. So remember the mantra, guys, that done is better than perfect. You don't have to be um, filled with the content right now. You don't have to have a, an intricately designed property investment website. You don't need to be the most knowledgeable person in the room. You can work up to that. The first step is taking the plunge and getting visible. OK, I speak to guys and girls who are worried about their lack of experience. You know, they tell me that they've got nothing to say, that they've got no experience. I'm a complete newcomer. And it's bullshit. And I tell them that we all have a story. Every single one of us has a story. And it's important to you. It's important also that the people that you are trying to get to raise finance from get to know who you really are. OK, so it's OK to get online and start posting you know, when you first post, get an introduction up there, who you are, where you've been, you know, what you're up to, or if you're new to property, um, that you'd like to connect with like-minded people, you will get responses. Document your journey along the way. You know, I tell a lot of the guys inside my mentorship program not to worry so much about the content and the how, but consider your social media presence as a diary of you, a day in the life of OK, there should be no smoke and mirrors. It sh there should be no airs and graces. Everything that you put out there on social media should be true and authentic and aligned to you. So the one piece of advice, guys, that I can give you is to treat your social media visibility as a diary entry every single day. That will actually take the pressure off feeling like you have to come up with Albert Einstein like content. OK, really, really important. Blog your journey. Try not to worry too much about the actual intricacies of what content to put, up, to put out there. That is a really powerful tip I'm giving you. Use your social media updates and postings as diary entries. 80% property related, 20% personal. It's really important that we get to know the person behind the property as well. Okay? This is relationship building on social media. Okay? Absolutely. And when people start reaching out to you guys, you have to nurture it. You have to expand on it. A mentor of mine said to me at the beginning of my journey, and it's really stuck, it's that visibility is credibility. And he could not have been more on point. When people see you consistently showing up, guys, telling, telling your story, engaging in posts, being open, being honest about your experiences, then naturally their warmth towards you grows. It's human nature. And your profile is gradually raised. And in turn, your credibility is increased. It's important that you engage within the groups, guys. Let them know that you're there. Comment on existing threads. Leave your opinions. Ask for questions. Join existing conversations. Become visible. Whether it's a simple well done comment on a post, whether it's a simple high five, just do it. 
Just do it. I would be fairly certain that for anybody who is watching this live tonight or who anybody anybody that catches this on the replay, because I know the names of everyone who has asked for the replay, I would be fairly certain that at least 95% of you are not putting yourself out there on social media because I don't see you putting yourself out there on social media. Now, that's a, that's a, you're leaving yourself wide open, guys. Wide open. So build your own content. Let them know who you are. Blog your content. Blog your background. Blog your journey. Tell us what you have learned along the way that you can actually use in your property business. From there, guys, online will naturally evolve into your journey in property. Taking pictures of your viewings, you know, leaving posts on your experiences of talking to the agents, posting pictures of the houses that you are passing as you're out and about walking in your investment patch. Be open, be honest, guys, but above all else, be consistent. This is a really, really, really fantastic way, guys, to let your character shine through. And by the way, guys, not everybody's going to like you, and that's okay. Because the people who are supposed to be in your circle, the people who are supposed to be aligned with you will naturally gravitate towards you. All right, that's something I had to get comfortable with pretty, pretty quickly. You know, in a, in, in before I went through my personal development in a past life, I would definitely have considered myself a people pleaser. I wanted everybody to like me. Um, you know, I felt bad about myself if, if someone dis disliked me. Quite frankly, now I couldn't give a fuck. You either like me or you don't. If you like me, then our worlds are aligned. If you don't, move on. And that's exactly the, the premise that you should take when you're putting yourself out there online. Be yourself. Don't try to be anybody else. Be authentic to you, true to you, because then you can stand on your own two feet with your held, held, head held high, knowing that you are nothing but yourself. And the people who are supposed to be with you for investment will naturally gravitate towards you. Okay? So I'm not telling you to go out there and do video content right now. If you could, that would be great. So just to recap, guys, the three things that we covered tonight, okay, on part one of Raising Finance 101, three bulletproof strategies, okay? The first one is get your investor pack compiled almost immediately, all right? Covering the things that I said that you could put in there irrespective of whether you have done a deal before or not. And compile your investor pack, make it bulletproof, let it do the talking for you. Let it also help you refine your elevator pitch. Side note, get, an elevator, get your elevator pitch up and running ASAP. Remember that your elevator pitch absolutely should run off your tongue as clearly as your name and your date of birth would run off it, okay? Step number two, we'll start tapping into your sphere of influence. Your sphere of influence, here's my phone, that's my sphere of influence right there. That's sphere of influence number one. Start tapping into what's at your fingertips immediately. Use the script that I put up here the, on the screen tonight, but start tapping into your sphere of influence almost immediately. You will be surprised at what, what can come from it. And step number three, get online, get visible today. All right, guys, that brings tonight's session to a close. I hope it's been really, really useful. Let me know in the comments below what your key takeaway was. Let me know if it's been useful. If any of you guys who are watching live or watching the replay would like to know a little bit more about how working with me behind the scenes inside our private mentorship program can help push you forward and um, can help raise finance, that is our area of expertise. We help um, property sourcers, deal packagers and novice investors raise £50,000 or more in 90 days or less, okay, using our conversion uh, chat strategy. So, if you would like to know a little bit more about working with us inside our private mentorship program, shoot me a DM. If we can help, we can chat. If I can't help you, I'll tell you and point you in the right direction. Guys, have a fantastic evening. We'll be back next Wednesday uh, for session two of Raising Finance 101. Have a fab evening. I will speak to you all soon. Bye.